I'm Connor Old, and welcome back to another episode of Old on Old. And this week, we're going to be looking at a movie that really cemented Harrison Ford's star power. I'm talking about 1986's Witness. So, if you guys are new to the series, what I do every single week is I break down a classic film I've never seen before. I talk about its historical context as to what makes it a classic, and I also give my thoughts on the movie because I am watching this for the first time, and I sort of ask the central question of, does it hold up? Um, if you don't know, Witness um, is about a cop who has to protect, a, protect a, a, an Amish boy who sees another cop kill a man. So it sort of forces the cop, John Buck, Harrison Ford, to go with this Amish boy and live in his community to keep him safe, also keeping um, himself safe. And jumping into the historical context, the reason why I did this movie was because this month's episode of Masters of Control Chaos, the very final one before, you know, I hope to pick it back up um, in, in, in March, I guess, or March or April, um, is Peter Weir. Now, Peter Weir is one of these guys where you look at his filmography and it's very surprising in terms of just like, oh, wow, he made this and this. You know, He's one of those directors that's totally sort of gone under the radar and totally underrated in that sense. And the film in the sort of uh, film community is kind of known for having that. Um, it was a hit at, at the time, ter- stars Harrison Ford, yet ever since the release of this movie, it's always been, hey, have you seen that Witness movie? Oh, that Witness movie's really good. It still holds up, blah, 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 blah. It's always been sort of a quickly revered movie um, because, you know, this is coming after Harrison Ford has done really Star Wars and Indiana Jones. He's, he's done well, these big franchises and sort of known for this, maybe one type of character. Um, and this is the first time where he really sold himself on his name. I mean, take a look at the poster. It says, Harrison Ford is John Book. You know, that's the tagline. Really just selling it on the movie star uh, power. And movie star power was definitely a lot bigger than it was back in the day. You know, people could open films, although they weren't super big. Um, we see something like this with Peter Weir's other film with Harrison Ford, The Mosquito Coast, which is another great performance by Harrison Ford. However, it didn't do so well at the box office. Um, Although, similarly with this one, it was a very challenging role for him to take, so it was a risky move. And I actually started to think more about sort of the idea of, of a star, you know. Um, it's one of those things where if this was a bad project, we could have seen Harrison Ford fizzle out. He was big in the 80s with Indiana Jones and Star Wars, and then kind of fizzled out. But he managed to take some risks, to some right projects, and now he's still around today because he's able to really show off um, his acting ability, which Ford actually has some. I mean, he has talent. He's not just this uh, charismatic star. And we see it with this movie. And I think a lot of people sort of forget how talented Harrison Ford is. So this is one of those movies that, even within the film community, what I sort of realize is that, oh, this is arguably Harrison Ford's best performance. You have to see it. You, you like these, some of these other movies? Well, see, see this guy in a, in a different light. Um, you know, they even give you the premise, but maybe that's not exactly what it was. Um, and being that word of mouth movie that it was, it actually did something sort of at the box office that I've never even seen before. Um, it started off really low at the box office, but sort of cr- actually gained more and more uh, each week until the fifth week of its release. So not its opening weekend, and its fifth weekend, it was number one. So its first weekend it was number two, and then built and built and built, and then and the fifth weekend it was number one. I mean, that's insane. Most of the time nowadays it's just one big opening weekend, then you drop 40, 50 percent if you're lucky. Um, that's sort of like an average, I guess you'd say. Um, this one is different. I mean, we've seen this one with something recently with Crazy Rich Asians, where it actually made more money in the second week. Um, and stay at number one, but that doesn't mean like this one opened at number two and then stayed there and then went to number one on its fifth week. I mean, you would never see that nowadays. This is the sort of definition of a word of mouth movie. Um, because maybe, you know, some people say it's the best thriller of the 80s, some people say it's the best uh, romance of the 80s. I mean, there's some. Uh, really interesting sort of takes and, and looks at this movie because it, it's different than what you expect. Um, and really, you know, you may not have heard of it. Um, maybe this is just something in film communities and circles that they like to talk about as a, a significant event, and that's why I sort of consider it a classic. I also want to talk about Peter Weir, and I thought this was um, one of the great films that he did. Um, I'll talk about more about him in the Masters of Control of Chaos episode, of course. Um, 
But I really think that, you know, not only did it resonate with the, 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 the um, commercial audience at the time, you know, it was higher than Breakfast Club and The Goonies. I mean, this was a big, high-grossing, successful movie at, of its time. Um, so in that case, it's good to look at the historical context. It also was well appreciated critically and served well reared. I, you know, I think it does hold up. I think most people do think it holds up um, in, in different aspects that different people take away with it, but I'll explain mine later. Um, and the movie you know, ended up getting nominated for eight Oscar nominations. Harrison Ford got his only nomination for acting in, in this film. Um, and it won for writing and editing. So one, two Oscars nominated for eight. I mean, people really enjoyed this movie. And it's so the time when you know, the box office successes also sort of correlated with uh, the Oscars. And it's just an interesting thing always to look back at these influential movies at the times and see how they hold up today. Because, you know, a classic is, is a weird term. Is it a classic because it holds up today? Or does it have to be, you know, some of them didn't open well, but now have sort of gained critical appreciation and are now considered classics. Um, but this one at the time, um, did really well at the box office because of that word of mouth and has things sort of, sort of gained that uh, appreciation throughout today just as the, the film that always has that underdog chance because it is going up against the giants of Star Wars and Indiana Jones in talking about Harrison Ford's, you know, great career. Um, but speaking of that, let's transfer over into my thoughts of the movie and I do want to sort of preface by saying you know, this this trailer and the beginning of the movie makes it seem like um, it's a thriller. And I was expecting that. I was expecting like something like The Fugitive, a Harrison Ford thriller. That was how it was, uh, you know, built up and sort of sold to me. Um, but it's not. It's not a thriller. Um, this is a romance movie. I do want to make that clear. There are action elements. So that's why maybe you get more of that. And you may be disappointed that's not more action but he has a fugitive for that. I mean, that's, I look at some of his other films in the career, I'm like, he's done that enough times. There's not enough times that he's done something like this. And I think that when I was watching the movie, um, when he sort of goes into the Amish farm and things are happening, I'm like, oh, why isn't he, why isn't he doing anything? Why aren't people coming after him? You know, this isn't thrilling. Um, this is uh, keeping me on the edge of my seat. It, it just, it became very slow in the middle of the film. And that's not a criticism of the movie. Um, because as I started to reflect more about it, I realized how much I actually did enjoy the movie and it actually required me to rewatch it with a different view, viewpoint and view lens and a different mindset because I was expecting something different. I mean, the very first time I watched it, I was kind of like confused at it because I appreciated what it was, but I didn't expect it. So it, it caught me off guard. But as I sort of went to the film, I appreciated how that dynamic switched, how we get the sort of um, get it done, get it fast, do it now, sort of attitude of the, of the, the city cop and John Book. And then when he goes to the Amish community, really just his life totally slows down. Um, and there's great elements in the technical parts uh, of this movie really n n nails it. Um, you know, there's really sort of sweeping um, uh, shots of the sort of the farm lifestyle. Um, the score is is sweeping, but it's not a epic in a while. In, in a way, it still feels intimate. Um, uh, this sort of lighting really has these soft edges and really brings out and emphasizes the yellows and the browns uh, of of the farm. And I think that just the sort of community aspect of the Amish, the sort of simple lifestyle, I think Peter Burr is really attracted to that and really interested in that. And that maybe he signed on thinking that this will be a thriller, but he sort of took the movie in another direction. It's was like, actually, I'm more interested in this romance bit and them sort of falling in love. And most definitely, I think, this is where the film shines. Uh, because of, of the romance at the center, because there's an initial attraction at the beginning, which is something I love. I don't like the for traditional format that we see nowadays where they hate each other. I mean, that works good in some movies, but it's just been so overused. So to see a movie like this um, really have this sort of initial traction, and then he sort of, uh, John Buck le learned the ways of the Amish community, and then sort of the amazing scene of the movie, um, that being of the What a Wonderful World uh, by Sam Cooke in the car scene when they're dancing and singing. You know, John Buck has sort of been living her last down, sort of, you know, trying to understand her, and now he's trying to bring her into his lifestyle. But like, this is why I do this, is why I listen to this, is what's through. You're missing out as an Amish person. I think it treats it with respect. I know the Amish community didn't really like this movie, but I think that the relationship between these two characters is very genuine uh, and, and very int and intimate and very 
earnest and genuine, and there's a passion between each other, sort of an unspoken passion, and that's all done by Kelly McGillis and Harrison Ford's brilliant, brilliant sort of acting and facial acting. And then Harrison Ford with this sort of realization that sort of, um, you know, Sort of, he, he likes her at the beginning with sort of appreciation for her, really is developed throughout the film. Um, and there are these sort of genuine sort of intimate um, moments um, that are sort of, uh, you know, not sexual, but then there's other moments that are very sexual. I mean, this sort of the scene where he's just staring at her, she take off her clothes. I mean, that's some of the most um, raw sort of intimate things that I've seen um, in a long time uh, on, on screen. It just sort of has a, it's a tension in the air. It's palpable. You can really feel the sort of chemistry that's going on between them, the sort of the love that's building and goes from sort of this sort of honest, sort of cute, sort of love to really really sort of a, a, a sexy film in that sense. And then it, it culminates in sort of the big action set piece. But that's not my favorite parts of the movie. I mean, you may get sort of the thriller aspects of it and enjoy that, which um, um, I find in, in their own right. But I was really attracted to Peter Weir's, I think, fascination, particularly with the romance, because a big chart of this, ch chunk of this movie is just this slow Amish drama romance, and that may not be as appealing as, you know, the Amish cop Harrison Ford thriller. Maybe that's why they sell it as Harrison Ford thriller, but I have to tell you, it's not that. And it really sort of, the greatness of this film is that, um, is, is the romance between each other, and particularly that sort of, uh, culmination of that final scene. I, mean, I was blown away by it. It's one of my favorite scenes I've seen all year. Um, they've just the them sort of coming together and just dancing and she sort of, as you can see in her face, she's sort of slowly learning to let go because she's been sort of tight and up in this rules and, and these restrictions and finally she's just trying to, you know, enjoy the music, enjoy this time and sort of let go all for worries and really sort of express their love for each other through this scene, throughout this sort of minimal dialogue scene. And I think Peter Weir does that a lot of the times so with just looks, with just shots, with just how they reach for the same thing or, or, you know, sort of look at each other. I mean, you really feel it and it's a brilliant job, you know, without these sort of catchy lines that you see in something like When Harry Met Sally, which are funny and brilliant and so awesome in that movie. But this is totally different and it works in a different way. It's very much like Carol in that sense. And I think Going into it with that sort of perspective, I appreciated the movie a lot more, and I knew I had to talk about it on the Peter Weir episode. So that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Comment below. Let me know your favorite Harrison Ford performance. That's about it. Make sure you check out Peter Weir, Masters of Control Chaos episode for more about this amazing underrated director, undervalued director, which is great. Movies like The Truman Show, Dead Poets Society, Master and Commander, Picnic and Hanging Rock, Witness. I mean, movies you've heard of for sure, but maybe not realized were by the same guy. Check it out. That's a fun one. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And until next time, stay tuned.